Hola chicos, your final Spanish exam is fast approaching. I really hope your reading and listening exams went well. I know many people said the listening for um, AQA was especially hard. Anyway, the writing paper is your chance to still get a solid grade. The date for this exam in 2024 is Monday the 10th, and it's in the afternoon with maths in the morning. Let's discuss how I would revise for it at the last minute. To begin with, I've got two pages of advice and tips. First, make sure you know your tenses, both for the actual writing questions, where you need to produce sentences and verbs in these tenses from scratch to get a good mark for vocab, as well as the translation, where they will put in some hard tenses to catch you out. The reading translation, and especially the last sentence, I know was very difficult. Um, hopefully AQA don't do that again with this paper. An amazing guy called James has made a whole grammar video with each of these tenses and other grammar stuff. That video is on this channel and linked below. I know people hate tenses, and if you feel you don't have time to learn them all, at least learn some common regular verbs for each tense and focus on the I, he, she, and they endings. You singular and you plural are not as commonly used in this paper. I've written on screen the different tenses that you need to know at GCSE level. Some of the latter ones are more difficult and more aimed at higher tier. Next, let's look at paper timings. I've put these two images here. The left one is for the higher paper and the right is for foundation. This is simply my recommendation, but please, in the exam, don't spend too long on a question and don't write too much. You simply don't need to. I always get people asking me, what if I write too much? Well, nothing bad happens. It's just a waste of time and you're more likely to make mistakes. So stick to the rough timings, a minute per mark, like you would in other subjects. I don't want any comments saying I didn't have time for the translation question. 12 mark translation question, you've got to attempt that properly. Thirdly, make sure to learn lots of sentence starters that you can have in your back pocket to use when needed. I have a PDF on my website, astarspanish.com, with a ton of these phrases and examples on how to use them as well. And along with sentence starters, you need connectives to make your sentences longer. Here's a good collection of these sorts of words and phrases. I've also recently published an Anki video with more phrases. My best tip is to learn them in the form of an acronym. You can write this acronym down and use it for both extended writing questions. By the way, these phrases are more directed at higher tier students. Foundation students don't need to use quite as complex language. And before anyone asks, yes, you can repeat the same stuff in both questions as they are marked separately. It's helpful to learn reasons you can give for various scenarios, like esto una partida de tiempo o dinero, which can be used in nearly every scenario. I used to milk those so much at GCSE. And even more niche phrases, like the environment topic, for example. Luckily, you do get an option of two questions for the 90 word and the 150 word. So if you see a word or topic you don't know, pick the other question. And one misconception is that you must write equal amounts for each bullet point. That's simply not true for, for Edexcel or for AQA. You can write as little as one sentence, as long as that sentence is grammatically correct, includes a verb, and is linked to that bullet point. Um, something my teacher always used to say is say what you can, not what you want. So if there's a certain job, for example, you don't know how to say in Spanish, please don't make it up. Use a job that you do know how to say. Okay, let me answer a 90 word bullet point super quickly for you guys. So I've chosen this one. ¿Qué hiciste el mes pasado para ganar dinero? What did you do last month um, to earn money? So let's plan it really quickly together. So in terms of plan, um, this bullet point itself is in the preterite tense. So hiciste is a preterite tense verb if I change the alignment of this. So preterite tense, I'm going to have to use in my answer. I'm also going to add one more tense um, and we can choose that later on. Okay, what phrases can I use? Let's use, so for the preterite, let's use lo, um, lo que más, with accent on the A, lo que más me gusto fue que, is a really good um, sentence starter for the preterite tense. Here, the accent on the A for más does not matter. It does not change the meaning of the word. However, you know that the accent goes on the A, so put it in there if you know. But here where it says gusto, this accent does matter because otherwise it changes the meaning of the verb. Because gusto is a verb. Um, what I liked most was that. And then let's use another phrase. Um, vale la pena is a really good one. Vale la pena means it's worth it. It's worth it. Literally, directly translates to it's worth it. So let's use these two phrases and then we can use the proto tense and one, one other tense that we can decide once I start writing. So if I put this on the side here, let's begin. Let's aim for two sentences and two tenses. So um, using the words in the question, el mes pasado. Oops, el mes pasado. So last month. Um, okay, what job can I say I'm doing? Let's add to our plan. Let's use the job of... Um, a lot of different jobs you can choose. Let's go working in a cafe. It's like a basic job. You can do like babysitting, any other sort of job that, you know, um, it, you can make it up any job that 
made you some money last month or whatever. So el mes pasado, um, trabajé, using the immediately conjugation, that into the I worked form in the preterite, so trabajé en una café. Um, y let's use y lo que más me gustó fue, um, let's not use que, let's use fue and then plus an infinitive, so fue hablar, for example, hablar con los, um, como se dice, los clientes, so like the customers, the clients, um, and then let's use porque, why do I like talking to clients? Porque son simpáticos. Oops, simpáticos. Okay, that's our first sentence. Second sentence, um, let's change tense, shall we, to the present tense. Let's do that relatively simple, I think. So the present tense, we can say, we can use our vale la pena, which is in the present tense. Otherwise, we could um, conjugate that in different tenses. So um, let's say, sin embargo, so some sort of opposite opinion, sin embargo, I like to refer to other people, so sin embargo, según, which means according to según mi madre, so immediately getting someone else's opinion, según mi madre, trabajar, trabajar en, oops, trabajar en una café, um, no vale, no vale la pena, it is not worth it, um, porque no um, gano mucho dinero, for example. Oh, no gane, I did not earn a lot of money. Um, okay, there, that's two sentences um, and two tenses. Okay, here I've got some um, sort of chat GPT generated adjectives. So instead of saying, instead of saying divertido, you can use emocionante, entretenido, inolvidable, agotador. I could have used this one to say my job was exhausting. Desafiante is a good one, comes from um, el desafío which is accent there, which is the challenge, the noun, and then um, enriquecedor, fascinante y relajante. Vale, I have lots of other writing videos on my channel, including full walkthroughs of the foundation paper and higher paper. I don't normally make foundation-specific videos, so go and make the most of it. And other videos on individual skills, like the 12-mark translation question. And a second translation practice video I've got here as well. Please don't neglect the translation question, guys. I'd highly recommend taking some time today to look at what past exam questions have looked like, and be sure to know what the mark scheme requires from you. Simply watching my walkthrough videos should be enough, because I talk about the mark scheme and example questions and answers on there. There's a 150 word model answer video on my channel as well. Lots of videos you need to go and watch. The last thing I have for you is a question which could be a bullet point in the 90 word. ¿Qué vas a hacer para proteger el medio ambiente? Answer it in the comments and I'll try to give you some feedback. Aim to use two tenses like you saw me do. The near future tense is definitely one you should use as the bullet point itself is in the near future tense. That's it for this video and probably the last video many of you will watch of mine. I have a Google form out on my community tab um, after the exam to see how it went. For the reading and listening paper, it had 160 responses, which is awesome. This 2024 cohort has been great to me and it's been a pleasure helping you with a subject I enjoy so much. Gracias y buena suerte.